Good afternoon, fellow Rotarians and guests. Welcome to the Rotary Club of Gainesville meeting at the Cade Museum. Happy to see you all today. Please remember to silence your cell phone. And if you are watching on YouTube, please remember to register your participation by sending an email to info at rotarygainesville.org. And now please welcome Pete Inwall to the podium for our song and pledge. So as you as y'all know, let me get close here. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Um, next uh, Tuesday is mem well, next Monday is Memorial Day, and Memorial Day is a, a day where we we honor and celebrate uh, those men and women who've given their lives for their country. There's not a lot of jokes associated with that kind of scenario, so this is a a service related joke, sort of like the VA service related service related injury. So. Anyway, young man walks into uh, the Navy recruiter's office and says, sir, I, I want to sign up. And the, the guy says, don't call me sir, I'm a petty officer. And the, the guy said, well, I, I want to sign up anyway. And he, so the recruiter signed him up for a, a four-year hitch. And so the recruiter said, uh, well, I'm glad you're, you're joining the Navy. Tell, you know, why, why did you decide on the Navy? He said, well, he said, my dad suggested it. And the recruiter said, your dad suggested, well, that's great. That's great. What, what does your dad do? He said, he's in the Army. <laughs> we're going to sing God Bless America. No, I'm sorry. We're going to sing My Country Tis of Thee. <laughs> My country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty. Of thee I sing, land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountain side, let freedom ring. Join me in pledging allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the republic for which he stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pete. And now, please welcome Ernie Hall to the podium for our invocation. <laughs> I assure you, I don't deserve it. <laughs> uh, we're uh, starting off with a little bit of sad news. Lori Vidal uh, lost his brother, uh, just uh, this week. So we want to keep him in our, pr uh, our prayers and the family. Uh, I was going to start out with a joke. Uh, I don't even remember what it was. You know, at my age, you know, you got to, if something's going in one ear, you got to stick bubble gum to it so it doesn't go out the other side. Uh, that's the joke. <laughs> Let, let's pray, though. Father God, we thank you so much for your goodness to each and every one of us. And Lord, as we come with heavy hearts for Lori and his family, we ask, Lord, that you would just wrap them with your love today, that you would help them feel your presence in an ever greater way just now. Lord, as we uh, near this uh, weekend when we celebrate our men and women of the armed forces, we, Lord, ask that you would continue blessing them, whether they're at home, overseas, or whether they're one of our many who are in hospitals around the country. Lord, we just place them in your capable hands. We ask now, Lord, that you would bless our club, to bless the food that we partake in, and we pray our uh, prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Ernie. You may be seated, but if you're a guest or visiting Rotarian, please remain standing to be introduced. Joe will bring around the microphone. And seeing no guests, moving right along to announcements. First up, Brendan Shortley. All right, this will be short and sweet. We hinted about it last week that we're doing a drive for Helping Hands Clinic. Most of you know, but just in case, the 32nd version is that since 1989, we've been helping the poor and homeless in our community. There was no clinic like this for decades and ever before, and it's 
it seems a little embarrassing that a medical school in a top flight university doesn't have a clinic in town to help the poor. So we tried to do that, and since then we have had over 30,000 visits. We don't just do medical care. We're the only psych care place in town that does free onboard medications. That's a big need in this community, as you probably know. And give out clothing. Speaking of which, we're doing a donation drive, so please bring any excess clothing that you have. And of course, money. We'll always take money. And you, if you give this year, we're going to give you a raffle ticket and raffle off some prize, like a new car or no, not but something hopefully that will be at least sentimentally valuable. Um, and uh, we appreciate you remembering that there's mission everywhere, overseas and right in your backyard. And not to be politically controversial, but no matter what side of the aisle you sit on, you should think of it as a good thing because we're saving the healthcare system a lot of money by doing it for a lot cheaper cost on the front end. And we're also trying to help people. So I hope that you will, that will appeal to you. So please give generously and give often. Thank you. Thank you, Brendan. Next up with an announcement, Greg Young. And I'd like to applaud. Thank you, Bill. It's good to be loved. So um, I want to applaud Brandon for what the work they're doing over there. And it's, it's really helpful and been impactful in the community. So please support that. Well, some of you may have been wondering when the Rebuilding Together project, which we do annually, was going to be. Well, it snuck up on us. It's this Saturday. The uh, Rotaract Club is, is spearheading this now. They're going to be there, uh, some of their members. Um, we will be doing uh, this Saturday, May 25th, 9 to 1. Uh, we have a location out in Hawthorne. You should have received an email yesterday uh, from Patrick that gives details, but I have the details. Please contact me if you need them. Um, also, basically, it's about light carpentry, screening, painting, and uh, it'll be in a historic home in Hawthorne, as I said. Uh, Closed-toed shoes and be ready to do some painting and get some paint on your clothes if you're okay with that. Gatorade water provided, and just look for the rebuilding signs and the truck, rebuilding truck that they have out front. So hope to see you Saturday. Thank you, Greg. And now, without further ado, please help me welcome our president, Linda Reinhart, to the podium. Okay, um, just a couple more um, bits of information for you guys. This last, this past Saturday, um, a number of the club members supported the Gainesville Opportunity Center Bike Day. Um, they, the, the team from our club made it all the way out to Hawthorne and back to Cypress and Grove after the event was over, but they still got to, you know, enjoy a, enjoy a beverage, uh, you know, late. But that's okay. We expect nothing less from Jason, so. Um, uh, with that, um, it was a good time had by all. They did raise a lot, raise a lot of money. I was there um, at Cypress and Grove helping out with some of the activities that were um, at the at the event. Um, and uh, I highly encourage you guys to to get involved with that in the future. So, um, also, you you guys will be sick of hearing from this. RLI, RLI um, is going to be in Gainesville August tenth. Registration is open. Um, again, we want to have a great a great uh, turnout so they will continue to bring it back to Gainesville making it easy so we don't have to drive to Jacksonville to participate in those activities and it's a great time so I encourage everybody to register for that as well um, with that I'm going to turn it over to John Gregory for our program for today I know you're all expecting a poem, right? Well, I won't let you down. <laughs> I went to the chemist so I could hear. What cures coronavirus, my dear? I thought with me she'd confide. Ammonia cleaner, she replied. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you worked here. Ammonia cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> Today, uh, we'll hear from a middle school student who has won an award from the state science fair. Unfortunately, I've already invited two other people, but they're taking tests right now. So that's, um, so they won't be here to present to us. 
But today we will hear from uh, Aradia, sorry, Aradia Casales, a sixth grade, sixth grade middle school student. Six, sixth grade. <laughs> she's, uh, she's from Howard Bishop Middle School, and she'll present to us what she presented to the state judges. Aradia will present her project. Ready? The Influence of Microplastics on the Growth of Allium Fistulosum. Got that? <laughs> anyway, I do hope that we'll be able to follow when she's done. Any questions, you should hold off until the end. Aradia. <laughs> Check, check, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's okay. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Aradia Kasala, and I'm a sixth grader from Howard Bishop Middle School. It's, I'm happy to be presenting this um, presentation to you guys. <laughs> Can you imagine, oh, let me just. Can you imagine a day without plastic? Well, the common use of plastic is leading to global plastic pollution. It's a significant and ongoing problem in our, in our environment and is negatively affecting the world's water quality, plant health, and agricultural growth. These plastics break down into tiny particles that are called microplastics, which can infiltrate into the soil. This pathway can transport microplastics into the plant's root systems. That, can, that brings me to the, pur the purpose of my project to investigate the influence of microplastics on the growth of Allium fistulosum, also known as spring onion, in an agricultural environment. I chose spring onion because it was fast growing and had a structure that was easy to collect data from. So, Microplastics are tiny plastic particles that are less than five millimeters in length. And I've, in my research, I found out that they can, I found out that they have many negative effects, such as reducing plant growth, altering plant psychology, and, accumul and it, they also accumulate in the plant's tissues. So in recent, so my purpose I, I was captivated by how microplastics might affect the vegetables we consume. My project aims to investigate their impact on the growth, development, and soil conditions of com common garden vegetables like Allium fistulosum. So my question was, how do polyethylene terephthalate, aka PET, microplastics with the mean diameter of 80 micrometers, PET, E glitters with a mean diameter of 125 micrometers and the high and HDPE microplastics with a mean diameter of 112 micrometers affect the growth of spring onions in an agricultural environment. So I hypothesize that increased exposure to these microplastics will lead to decreased plant height, root length, strength of the plant shoots, and also the root biomass. And for the glitter and the HDPE microplastics, I I hypothesize that they'll have a smaller effect than the 80 micrometers PET microplastic since it can easily attach to the roots and be absorbed by the plant. So these are the material materials I used in my experiment. I used 80 micrometers PET microplastics, 125 micrometers glitter, and 100 and 100 and 150 micrometers HDPE microplastics and etc. So this was the HDPE microplastics. I made it by sanding a detergent canister. <laughs> yeah. And um, this was the procedure I followed. I first set up two sets of three styrofoam cups and one more for the constant control. And then I put and then I put two cups of soil in each in each jar, and I also incub and I incubated five grams of glitter in the low concentrate, ten grams of glitter in the high concentrate, and for the and for the PET microplastics, I put 
in the, I put one gram in the low concentrate and two grams in the high concentrate. So these are, this is my setup. And yeah. So this is a continuation. So I incubated five grams of the HDPE microplastics in the low concentration and 10 grams in the high concentration. And then I treated this for four weeks too. This incubation allowed for the interaction of the microplastic con con components in the soil. So I plant, and so after these four weeks, I planted three spring onions in each one, in each jar. So, and then I repeated that for the PET one, PET microplastic jars, the HDPE plastic jars. And then I spring, and then I observed the plant and took images for, to look inside the microscope. And so these were the microscope images I found. So in the high concentration, it looked way unhealth, unhealthier than the, in the control. And yeah, so I observed that the 80 micrometers microplastics had a higher had a higher effect than the had a higher effect than the other two microplastics, and the plant showed lack of nutrition. And yeah, these were my datas. Yeah. Uh, and then my in my conclusion, I the findings from my experiment revealed substantial impacts of these microplastics on plants. And I observed um, decreases in plant height, root length, and strength of the plant shoots and onion bulb biomass. This, this supported my hypothesis. My baby girl, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for this opportunity. Sixth grade. <laughs> All right, yeah. Anybody have a question? Uh, both my sons and their two daughters went to Howard Bishop. It's a wonderful school. Uh, yes. And congratulations on the science fair. I actually judged one one year, and it was a challenge to judge it. I have a question. Yes. Everyone in this room has probably got something in clothing that has plastic in it. Yes. Uh, and I'm wondering if uh, synthetic fibers, which are already pretty small from clothing that gets discarded, is a large source of the microplastics. Yeah, I think it is, since it's a commonly used, like, commonly used item product. So, it, yeah. It's, yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. Mike, 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 Mike. <laughs> Mike, Mike. Uh, um, my question is similar, and congratulations on a great experiment. Thank and you. The, and the procedures were wonderful also. I noticed that you strictly followed scientific procedures. But my question is, how prevalent are microplastics in normal farm soil? Um, prob probably they're increasing with, the, with more common use uh, chemicals. And prob yeah. I need to look into that. <laughs> well, yeah. In the fertilizer. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. Inform. My turn. <laughs> Marvelous presentation. Where do you go from here? Sixth grade? The world is your oyster. What do you plan on doing with this analytic mind? And a I obviously, you have a commitment to the ecology of the world by virtue of your area of study. Thank 
Thank you. Huh? Oh yeah, yeah. I want to become. I want to. I want to dig into this subject more deeper. And I want to see uh, how different types of soil can impact. Like earthworms, they can. Uh, they can. Uh, microplastics can attach to these earthworms and take these microplastics deeper in the soil. And yeah, I, and I want to try to find a way to take these microplastics out of the soil. Um, did you find that the, um, the, the plants, uh, when they took up the microplastics, it could cross the cell wall into, into the plant, so then we would ingest it? Um, yeah, probably the chemicals inside these microplastics can leach into the, and destroy some of the cell, into a cellular level. Well, I understand we're basically swimming in microplastics in the air, you know, in the water, just everything, so... Uh, I understand there are some microbes that can consume the plastics, and um, that's a, one of the things they're working on. But yeah, I, 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 I saw a research about like, were like these earthworms? Not not earthworms. Like these mealworms can like eat these microplastics. Yeah, and digest it. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, nanoplastics, which are smaller than microplastics. Thank you. All right. Well, um, we were supposed to have two others today, um, and uh, obviously, as as John said, uh, due to t the testing schedules, um, they were not able to make it today. So um, we have lots of time left over for um, some socializing and stuff. I do encourage you guys to. What was that? You're making so yes, craft talk. Do you, anybody want to do a craft talk at last minute? <laughs> In case you really want to be thrown into it. <clears throat> Jason, do a craft talk? Oh, OK. Um, John, would you like to come do a craft talk? I mean, I, I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus since this is unplanned. Sure, great. Wow, this is kind of cool, like 20 years later. <laughs> it's a flashback. So my name's Dana Nemini, and I um, actually it's very different than the last time I did this. Um, I've been a member of this club on and off for over 20 years, and I have been um, a president and very much a part of leadership at one time in this club. Um, at that point in time, I had a career. I was marketing and business development, and I did that in many different industries. Um, Cox Cable moved me to Gainesville in 1988 for two years. I never left. Um, and then I, I became a consultant. I worked at Naylor Publications. And the last um, 10 of 11 years that I worked, because I guess I now consider myself retired, until I go back to work again. Um, I worked at UF Health and, and built the program that um, drove referrals into the Health Science Center for both the College of Medicine and Shands, which was a wonderful and amazing. Until I left, which was when I left this club, and I went to the villages to open up a hyperbaric um, oxygen therapy clinic, which was the first one in the world and was um, involved with an Israeli group in doing that. But after a year of that and deciding the villages isn't really, um, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an urban legend, just let me put, put it that way. So um, I moved back to Gainesville um, without a job 
and didn't really expect to stay retired, but did. And um, it's been a wonderful time. At that point in time, we um, went back in to save a charter for the Monday Club, and several of us left this club. And we did a really good thing. That club is now thriving with over 35 members. And then a few of us have chosen to come back to our home club because this truly is our home. Um, I would be remiss without telling you that my mother, who I saw online earlier, um, my mother is a member of this club, Margaret Combs. Some people don't realize that. Um, and my children grew up in this club. My son, John, is now 30 and is an engineer um, with his graduate degree from UF at Jones Edmonds with my best friend, dear friend, Grace Horvath's husband, John. And my daughter is now working for a CPA in Alachua. She's 25 and finishes her degree at Santa Fe this month. So I love you all, and I'm so happy to be back. <laughs> You, don't, you know, if you keep volunteering people, you are going to end up here. <laughs> Ryan's going to have lots of time to talk in the upcoming year as our incoming president, so. <laughs> Just stop. Just stop. For those of you on Zoom, Jason is being his normal self and causing trouble. Instigator. There we go. Um, okay, so uh, I will go ahead and close out the official meeting, but again, please stay, talk. Me, use this opportunity to, to, to um, welcome some of our new members, uh, get to know some other people, um, exchange and, and enjoy uh, each other's company for just a few more minutes. Um, our speaker for next week is uh, Jimbo Skiles. He's going to be here talking about Springs Conference Conservation. Um, our quote of the day is, science knows no country because knowledge belongs to humanity and the torch in which illuminates the world. And that's Louis Pasteur. And I don't have a ticket <laughs> because we're ahead of schedule. Anything but 856, please. 864. The number is 864. And with that, again, please enjoy yourself. Meeting is adjourned.